PPCM is for global effect and women from everywhere. All right. Hello, everyone. And we are back with another Let's Talk PPCM virtual PPCM chat. We have our heart sister, Miss Michelle, that's tuning in today to be able to tell her story. We also have the secretary of Let's Talk PPCM, Bobby, on here joining us. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, so, Miss Michelle, when you first heard about PPCM, how was that for you? That was pretty crazy to say that I was, um, I think, uh, about 35 years old in heart failure. And um, I ended up being diagnosed, I think my baby was about six or seven weeks old once I found out that I had it. And I, I, I must say that my um, my maternity leave pretty much so sucked because I could barely hold my baby. And by the time I started to feel, um, feel better or strong enough to uh, lift him, it was, uh, that was our um, back to work. So, and then I still really wasn't feeling um, <laughs> 100%. So, um, but I had a, I had a horrible pregnancy, um, in the beginning because I, um, I was, uh, diagnosed with, um, a severe nausea and I had multiple trips to the hospital. Um, uh, my longest stay during my pregnancy was a week and they were always talking, almost talking about sending me home with a stint. Um, uh, with nausea medicine. So, but uh, after all of that, it got a little bit better. And my last date, um, I had Ashton at 36 weeks and towards the end of the pregnancy, I started to feel um, really, really anxious and couldn't sleep. And then I started back taking, soaking in the tub towards the end of the pregnancy because it felt like it, um, like chilled my heart or, you know, something, you know, cal calm my nerves. And so uh, <clears throat> the last um, few weeks of the pregnancy, uh, I told the nurse that I was feeling anxious and couldn't really sleep and they said basically that it that's uh, pretty much so normal um then so i had a c-section and i think my after we had the baby um my blood pressure was still extremely high and um we went into this little uh recovery room overnight and um, I kind of don't remember much of anything, to be honest with you, from uh, at that point, because <laughs> I think I must have been asleep for a good little while. And did you like black out or like? Um... I think no, I don't think I was. I blacked out. I just don't remember it. So because yeah, I noticed a um, some many horses do that don't like remember it around that that time or that moment and i was like i don't know what that could be linked to um uh you know as if you know because some of them code or you know i'm learning about the coding and uh or the fainting and stuff like that so mm -hmm. you don't remember having none of that happen it was just blank mm -hmm. like yeah just blank i didn't code or anything mm -hmm. <coughs> um i uh after that, we got back into the room. My pressure was still high. So, um, but I went home, I think, three days later. Um, I went back to the emergency room two days after I got home. And because I couldn't stop throwing up again. So, sent me home, said I had a stomach virus. Wow. And... Um, 
So it was getting close to the time, about five or six weeks had passed, and I'm still like, I could barely walk down the hallway. I could barely pick Ashton up. I can barely push the stroller. So, um, and of course, I wasn't sleeping. And um, I made a, I made a um, appointment with my primary care doctor. Y'all, that was the worst mistake I've ever made, ever. Oh my gosh. So went in to see him. Um, he talked about the swelling in my legs and stuff. Because, of course, I forgot to tell y'all I was also swollen. Um, and he thought it was a blood clot and had me make an appointment with one of those, um, those scan places where you go and uh, they put the like dye. Like the touchstone or something like the imaging place. Yeah. Uh-huh. And what made him think of blood clot was because of the swollen leg. Uh-huh. Okay. So, oh, and he also thought I had, um, it, uh, my drive was hyper. Uh, what's it called? Um, my thyroid was uh, hyper. And so he prescribed medicine for that. So that ended up making me worse. And, um, so, um, I didn't go straight to the, um, the imaging place. I just waited for my appointment. My appointment finally happened and, uh, the guy did all the tests and I'm, I'm walking out the door and he comes running back to get me. Cause he's in, he's looked at my scans and saying um, we can't get in. T- it, this was a Friday. We can't get in touch with your primary care doctor to see what you want, what he wants us to do. I said, well, call my gynecologist because he said I don't want to send you home. <coughs> I don't want to. <coughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to send you home because. If you lay down, you, it's a chance that you couldn't wait. You might not wake up because there was fluid around my heart. And um, my primary care doctor said, yes, for uh, go straight to the emergency room. But I didn't go straight to the emergency room. I went home <laughs> and I waited for my husband to get off. And uh, he took us that night. And... Um, They admitted me and um, I had to take a bunch, you know, take the lake six. And um, I don't remember what my EF was, y'all, but I I know I'm not as bad as some of the other heart sisters. I was pretty lucky. So, um, so what I did, I'm gonna rewind you real quick. When you went to the emergency room, what made you go ahead and go to the emergency room? Because I know that sometimes us as big patients uh, and mothers, we we're a little hard headed when it when it's time to try to go. Oh, I didn't want to go by my. I didn't want to go by. I didn't want to go by myself. Yeah. I was okay. Scared. So right, I right. Waited, you know, I wanted to wait for. Um, I waited for my husband, and uh, no, he goodness. took me. So, um, we did that and, um, that was in October. So I had Ashton in August, October, and, um, I think I stayed in the hospital about, uh, three or four days. So after that, they, uh, you know, different medications to, uh, get it under control, my blood pressure under control, and I lost a lot of weight. I mean, I was super skinny. I, um, I got to breastfeed all the way up until um, he was about six months, and he just didn't want it anymore, probably because I wasn't producing enough. So, um, and... Um, I had another few more trips to the, um, emergency room and 
a few more overnight stays after that. And then uh, Dr. Kelly, um, he managed to get everything under control. And I ended up moving out here to Dallas where, um, gosh, I can't think of my heart. I can't think of my cardiologist's uh, name right now. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. He, What's your cardiologist? You could just say your cardiologist. <laughs> my cardiologist says I can't have any more kids. Um, oh, well, y'all heard that. <laughs> so, but also my age plays a, a factor for me now. Hmm. I'm 40, so... And you look very um, good for that age, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um I am actually better now. My EF is at just about um I think it's what um at fifty five almost. So okay. yeah. Normalized so, now. Yeah, but I'm still on all my medications mm -hmm. and unfortunately I'm also a diabetic. So Aww. Yeah. I, I don't know if like if that's one thing that we do have to worry about or look out for in the future on um, having heart conditions on um, what it may lead to in the future. You know, that's mm -hmm. one thing me and Bobby be trying to figure out. Um, you know, I think that this could lead to something else or doing something else to our bodies, you know, but it's, it's a mystery, which is why we want the science involved, you know, while we're trying to do this to be able to bring more information, I guess, to the light is what you could say that we're doing now. Uh, mm -hmm. because you know a lot of people probably don't stop to read our blogs or read stories a lot of people don't like to read and you know that's understandable you know it's the different learners out there in the world some people want to watch a video some people like music some people want to read you know so we can we want to do it all kind of ways to get it out there you know um but with your cardiologist so your cardiologist was aware of peripartum cardiomyopathy like he knew exactly what it yeah. was he did. Have you had patients before? Yes, he had. Oh, oh, he and had even, And then, I, uh, uh, mm -hmm, yes. And it was weird, you know, after going into a follow-up and um, being the youngest person, it's like, every time you go into the, uh, sit in the cardiologist's office, like, geez. And then also, um, I followed up with my, um, my OB, to, because I we did did we still do um, more kids because <clears throat> I only have one, and um, they're like uh, uh, my regular cardiologist had a patient with um, PP, uh, you know, post um, cardiomyopathy. So I would I had the right doctors at least in Louisiana I did because I I'm still I still don't really have a uh, a good gynecologist out here, so mainly see my um my cardiologist is the person I see major for majority, and I have a primary care doctor. So but right, he says no more babies. <laughs> yeah. Um. Bobby, you have any questions or anything you want to ask? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, let's just listen. Mm -hmm. I know, it's just interesting listening, right? It's mm -hmm. like, Everything it's sounds like so familiar. Ah, that's the thing. Uh-oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, that's okay. the thing about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, uh it's it's kind of like overwhelming sometimes but i like the the chat thing i'm glad like we're starting to do this because i feel like it's like it's i don't want to say emotional bring an emotional state but just bring it to realization like you know mm -hmm. we're able to talk about it you know um hopefully in the future we'll be able to try to do you know more chats probably like the sword heart sisters you know we'll talk mm -hmm. about that later but yeah, I'm just so thank thankful and I'm just like really trying to figure out what to say right now. But I'm just so happy <laughs> that you came on here and shared your story with us. Cause I mean, we're not trying to do like our professional and stuff, you know, we just, we at home. So we just, you know, everybody's just in their comfort zone. So that's the best thing. And um, okay. I'm just trying to see exactly, cause you went over everything. Like it's like nothing else. 
that we <laughs> that I have to ask. Like, you know, that's the thing is just telling a story. So you did that, and um, it kind of went a little quicker than what I expected to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, no, you were fine. You were fine. It's just, that's awesome. So, I mean, you know, I, I give the heart scissors about up to an hour because you just never know how long sometimes it takes. You know, yeah. and plus we're just, you know, we're chatting as well as trying to tell our stories, you know, it's, you know, or relating to one another or like how you're in Dallas, like, woo-woo, we in Dallas too, like, no, no, Bobby's in Dallas, I'm like at the borderline of Dallas, but I'm, I'm, I'm right there with y'all. I think <laughs> not, you're not too far from me, so, because I'm the Grand in, Prairie. Yeah, I'm in Cedar Hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, you up the street, like both of y'all is like like that to me <laughs> yeah right next to me <laughs> oh that is awesome okay mm-hmm. so uh well i guess that'll be done with our chat let me um go ahead and end our recording real quick hold on all right thank you guys for tuning in to our virtual ppcm chat We'll see y'all next time. Closing out. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord.